Drug companies raising prices in the new year, and President Trump is not at all happy about it. Here's his tweet. Drug makers and companies are not living up to their commitments on pricing, not being fair to the consumer or to our country. Alex Azar, Health and Human Services Secretary, is with us now. Sir, you were meeting with the President yesterday at the White House about this issue of drug pricing. What can you tell us about the meeting? What are you and the President going to do about it? Well, Stuart, the President and I were meeting about our plans to bring down drug prices. And I want to be really clear to the pharma companies out there and to the pharmacy benefit managers. The President and I will not stop until list prices of drugs come down. This behavior has to stop. Drug prices must come down. And we will roll out more regulatory and legislative proposals, and we will work with Democrats and Republicans to get drug prices down. The Wall Street Journal and others not too happy about this. They see this as drug price controls, which they say are a negative. What say you? Well, it's an absolutely silly system that we have that the more you increase the price of your product, the more competitive you make it. The companies that have increased their prices here on January 1 all admitted they were doing so basically to funnel kickbacks in the form of rebates to pharmacy benefit managers to keep preferred status of their drugs on the formularies available to patients. Now, we've seen some good behavior, you know, Amgen, Merck, Gilead, each of them have had products that they have significantly reduced the list price of their products on. We need to see more of this. We need other companies to follow. We need bigger products to have those price decreases. And the president and I will not stop until we see price decreases. If they don't decrease prices, how will you punish them? I will spend every minute, the next six years, the president and I are going to work to drive regulatory and legislative change to bring those prices down for the benefit of the American patient. We're going to work with anyone. All options are on the table if they deliver solutions that keep the patient at the center and keep America's patients safe. Them's fighting words, Mr. Secretary. They are indeed. Okay. I want to move on to New York City. The mayor in this city taking a cue from California announcing guaranteed health care for all New Yorkers, the New York City people that is, including illegal immigrants. What do you make of that, sir? Uh, well, I don't want to comment on any uh, governor's or mayor's particular proposal here around health care because they may come to us asking for waivers. But I, I just say we all share the goal of improving affordable private sector access to health care for Americans. And uh, we're prepared to work with anyone if we can help deliver private sector solutions that deliver affordable, value-based options for people to get quality health care in the United States. We have to avoid the one-size-fits-all solutions that assume that this doubling down on our broken third-party payer system is the way that we bring that change about or that we help people. Okay. I just want to bring in what I think is, is terrific news, and we got it this morning from the American Cancer Society. Cancer deaths are down 27% in the past 25 years. Now, I'm sure there are lots of factors contributing to this. Can you give us a list? How did we do this? Well, one of the biggest things was we decoded the human genome through the work of Francis Collins and others here at the National Institutes of Health, and that allowed us to get an enhanced understanding of the molecular nature of cancer and the disease that we're fighting. And then the groundbreaking work of doctors like Steve Rosenberg at NIH, who learned how to harness the body's own immune response to attack cancer in the body. And then, of course, the great work of Commissioner Scott Gottlieb at FDA, where we are, we, where we are approving drugs, new molecular entities at a, at a historic clip, 59 new drugs approved just last year. Uh, so this team is mobilized and working to bring innovation to American patients. But Stuart, just to get back to the topic before, if a patient can't afford the drug, they don't have access to it. Okay, got it. Um, in 1965, 42% of American adults smoked cigarettes. In 2017, it was down to 14%. This surely is a big contributor to the decline in cancer deaths. Well, we want to keep bringing smoking levels down. And, Stuart, you and I have talked on your program before about the real problem we have with youth smoking and youth initiation of e-cigarettes and nicotine addiction. And that's where the president and HHS, our leadership here, has been unwavering in our efforts to keep youth from getting addicted to nicotine and getting addicted to combustible tobacco. And we're going to keep driving those efforts forward, Stuart. But those, those vaping devices... Uh, doesn't that help people get off the smoking of tobacco? 
Well, you're absolutely right. These vaping devices or e-cigarettes can be important public health tools for people to transition out of combustible tobacco. The problem is in the last couple of years, we have seen an epidemic of youth using these e-cigarette devices to initiate nicotine addiction. And that will become a pathway not only to combustible tobacco, but other forms of addictive behavior. You know, Stuart, what happens is when a youth, a teenager becomes addicted to a substance, it actually rewires the brain and creates a predilection to other forms of addiction. This is not a good thing for public health and we have got to stop it. Got it. Mr. Secretary, thank you very much for being with us again. We always appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Stuart. See you later.